welcome to ITV News Meridian. Tonight's headlines as we say happy birthday NHS. Smiles and celebrations across the Thames Valley. We're at Basingstoke Hospital with patients and staff and at Westminster Abbey where local medics have played a big part in a service of celebration. My role here is to represent the NHS, represent the, the nurses, you know, Filipino British nurses, all of us in the NHS and it's a huge responsibility and I do want to make them all proud. This leaflet is coming through your letterbox one day soon. It tells you what the new National Health Service is. We go back to the beginning of a health service designed to help everyone, paid for by all. But what about the future? It's never been more in demand or more under pressure. We speak to former Health Secretary Matt Hancock. And the £2 million boy, the cost of little Harry from Hampshire's treatment that his mum says was priceless. The NHS innovations that save lives. Good evening. For so many doctors, nurses and patients, today was just another day in the life of the NHS. But it was also a huge milestone as the service marked its 75th birthday. Well, the celebrations and smiles haven't got rid of the waiting lists or the strikes, but for many it was a time for reflection and for hope. Andrew Pate has spent the day at Basingstoke Hospital for us today. Andrew, a busy day there, but then I guess it, it kind of always is. Absolutely, yes, Matt, a, a very busy day. And personally, for me, a really amazing day, seeing all, all the different departments of this hospital coming together to try to get the best results for people. Uh, I've had a great day having a look around here and finding out just what the NHS looks like, age 75. Outside Basingstoke Hospital, a knitted happy birthday message from a former patient. Inside is work as normal. Nurse Immaculate has come to see Georgina, a cancer patient recovering from surgery, a patient full of praise for the NHS. The NHS has saved my life three times, <laughs> and I'm very grateful to the NHS. I'm very, very grateful. Whatever is wrong with the NHS, if you are seriously ill, it is a wonderful institution. Immaculate has been nursing at Basingstoke Hospital for just one of the NHS's 75 years, but feels it's the envy of the world. Coming from Nigeria, where health is a priority, without the NHS, I wouldn't be standing here, I wouldn't be wearing this uniform, and I wouldn't be touching lives here in the UK. So I think um, kudos to NHS. The changing face of the NHS can be seen in the blood science department at Basingstoke, a state-of-the-art unit which has sped up results for patients. One of those benefiting is Sarah, an emergency department matron. She's returned to the NHS after 10 years in the private sector. I think it is a very precious commodity. I think we're very lucky to have it. The work that we do is amazing. We've got great camaraderie. Uh, we all work together for our vision, and that is to, to, to give outstanding care to patients. This next one is somebody that uh, works for the NHS on this wonderful 75th birthday we're celebrating today. Pete has come from Leicestershire, as Basingstoke is one of only two hospitals in the country who specialise in the rare form of abdominal cancer he's being treated for. And this hospital is brilliant. The staff as well, outstanding, all of them. Hampshire Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust has 8,500 staff who work at Basingstoke, Winchester and Andover. Hi, ladies. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. For them, it's a chance today to celebrate 75 years of the NHS. While on the wards, the thank yous are plentiful from those who've been treated. So 75 years old, somebody who's been part of that for 42 of those years is Chief Nurse Julie. How much has the NHS changed during your time? 
Well, I've seen significant changes. Um, I mean, there isn't a day goes by in the NHS where there isn't new evidence and new research that causes us to treat people and care for people differently. And particularly things like the complexity of patients we see in hospital now. It's an elderly, more elderly population, a lot of frailty. Um, things like, you know, 40 years ago, if you had a heart attack, you might be on hospital for a couple of weeks. Now you're in and out in a, in a day or so. So come quite significant change. But equally, a lot of the fundamental care hasn't changed at all. So caring for people, help helping them to eat, drink, um, personal care, you know, that is the same throughout. It has been a tough few years for the NHS. Are you still proud to work for the NHS? Yeah, I am incredibly proud to work for the NHS. I've absolutely loved every minute of my time. Um, it's a real team effort, you know, we all work really hard, but uh, there's not a single day goes by where I don't see people go above and beyond their jobs to make sure people get good care. So I'm incredibly, incredibly proud to be part of the team of, of the NHS. And just briefly, what do the patients say to you? I mean, most patients' feedback really positive. We get some lovely feedback. We don't always get it right, and, you know, when we don't get it right, we're always keen to learn um, and learn from that to make sure that we can make sure the next person get, we get it right for. So, but overwhelmingly, patients' feedback very positively. Well, Julie, thank you very much indeed. So, plenty <coughs> to be proud of, but still learning all the time. Fascinating uh, insight there, Andrew. Thank you very much indeed for now. Such is the size of the NHS workforce, with one and a half million employees that just 0.1% of them receive the honour of an invitation to the service of thanks at Westminster Abbey today. But nurses, ambulance staff, support workers and doctors from across our region were among the congregation. With more, is Sally Simmons. Pomp and ceremony and politicians in abundance at this morning's service at Westminster Abbey. The Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh in attendance, but today was all about the people who look after us, who feel our pain, who try their hardest to make us better. Nurse May Parsons from Buckingham Healthcare Trust was chosen to carry the George Cross, which our late Queen awarded to the NHS for services during COVID. The nurse gave the world's first COVID vaccine outside of a clinical trial. My role here is to represent the NHS, represent the, the nurses, you know, Filipino British nurses, all of us in the NHS, and it's a huge responsibility, and I do want to make them all proud. Dr Michael Grixatis, a paediatric intensivist from Southampton, spoke about evacuating children with cancer caught up in the war in Ukraine. And what happened on the aircraft still today remains a hugely emotionally and clinically very challenging experience. He praised his team for their can-do attitude. It was uh, clinically highly stressful. There was a lot of unknowns, um, but actually to be able to show how the NHS within sort of 48, 72 hours can pull together an international rescue mission um, just shows what the NHS can do. The Dean of Westminster, David Hoyle, saluted the dedication of wonderful people, saying it was all about hope and belief. Hard decisions, soft hands, all making hope real. There were paramedics there, my colleagues that have come with me, both community responders, so they're volunteers for South East Coast Ambulance Service. We had nurses, we had doctors, yeah, a wide variety of people from across, across the NHS. We need to preserve the NHS, we need to look after the NHS. Um, it's done some amazing things since its foundation 1948. We need to preserve it and look after it. 1,500 NHS workers from every aspect of care, celebrating 75 years of care and contemplating what the future holds. Sally Simmons, ITV News. More of the day's news now, and a woman has appeared at Winchester Crown Court charged with the murder of a man in Andover. 62-year-old Stuart Crocker was found at his home in New Street a week ago. 36-year-old Winter Swan Miller has been remanded in custody until the 11th of October, when she's expected to enter a plea. The roof of a house has been destroyed by fire in Surrey. Firefighters from across Hampshire and Surrey were called to U-Shot Lane near Farnham yesterday afternoon. Much of the first floor was severely damaged. No one was injured. It's not yet clear what caused it. 153 out of 190 South Western Railway ticket offices could close under plans to modernise and update stations across the network. A public consultation has been launched about the changes which would see passengers pay for journeys by tapping contactless cards on barriers, 
using self-service machines and buying tickets on trains. The company says that 75% of journeys are already made using smart media. The watchdog Transport Focus is carrying out the consultation and says it will make sure passengers' views are heard. Industry regulator Ofwat says water companies are planning to increase prices further for households. Chief Executive David Black says suppliers want to invest in infrastructure. Meanwhile, the UK's largest supplier, Thames Water, continues talks on fresh funding to secure its long-term future. Yesterday, the company was fined £3.3 million for polluting rivers near Gatwick Airport in 2017. The Odeon Cinema at Oxford is to be replaced with a new community hub once its lease expires next year. The proposals for the £37 million site are due to be signed off by the City Council next week. Now, escaping into a virtual world often involves teenagers and video games, but in Oxfordshire, the technology is now being used in care homes to improve the physical and social well-being of older and less mobile residents. Well, it's part of a trial being run by Oxfordshire County Council and an Oxford-based virtual reality company. Juliet Fletcher went to find out more. Sheila and Merrill are getting their steps in at Fairfield Residential Home in Oxford. They're using virtual reality headsets attached to a seated treadmill to help them get some exercise and explore new surroundings. I think it's good to do something different and I really, really appreciate the opportunity that was given to me to do something different because it's so important and, and, and it stimulates the mind. Well, to get the exercise, I think it's... Um it's very good. This is not a panacea to say get rid of life. This isn't like that. This is, this is to step in when actually life becomes really challenging and, you, and, and it, it offers an opportunity for escape uh, and exercise. Uh, when the weather is dreadful outside or you're feeling a bit down and you want to just escape into a beautiful environment. I think a really important aspect of what we're doing is re-providing a purpose in life. The technology is designed to improve physical and mental well-being. A resident can go for a virtual walk in the park accompanied by a friend or carer on a tablet or visit a once familiar place, triggering social interaction. We're going to go to Aberystwyth. Have you been to Aberystwyth? I have been to Aberystwyth. Well, yes, then yes. here, you're, this is a view from the yes, um, castle. We find that residents that come in who are previously living at home, they have a decline in mobility, um, which is why they need to come into care. And that can be really difficult and overwhelming for them to lose that sense of independence. Um, so this is really good for kind of bridging that gap between coming into care, getting them back on their feet. We're all about promoting independence at Fairfield. Um, so it makes that process a lot more comfortable for them. Fairfield is one of two residential homes taking part in a 17-month trial. We are really committed to, um, to innovation and uh, emerging technology, particularly in the iHub where I work. And uh, we were really lucky uh, to be able to form an, a, a partnership with Rover Systems um, and we gained some external funding from Innovate UK during, uh, during the COVID lockdowns to, um, to reduce social isolation in older people in, in care home settings. As life gets more challenging for some, this immersive experience is designed to get people walking and talking. Juliet Fletcher, ITV News, Oxford. You are watching ITV News in the Meridian region. More on NHS 75 coming up. Don't forget, of course, you can find uh, more from us on our website. ITV.com slash Meridian is the address. There's the phone number if you'd like to give us a call. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and on Instagram. Now let's return to the NHS and amid the celebrations we know the health service is under more pressure than ever. In a moment we're going to be talking about where the NHS goes from here to former Health Secretary Matt Hancock. Before that, let's go back to the beginning. The creation of the NHS came from a strong feeling that not enough people had access to reliable health care. Before its inception, the voluntary sector played a major role in funding treatment, but coverage was haphazard. But even those on very low incomes had often had to pay to be seen by doctors or to be operated on. As Derek Johnson reports. One of the government's promotional films back in the 1940s heralding a revolutionary concept. This leaflet is coming through your letterbox one day soon. 
It tells you what the new National Health Service is and how you can use what it offers. It offered free health care for all at the point of delivery. Shirley Smith from Buckinghamshire is a former nurse, but remembers what things were like before the NHS. When she was six, her appendix burst. So obviously I had to go to hospital by ambulance. So there was quite a hefty bill to pay. And the only way my father could pay it was to pawn a gold sovereign. He had to find some way of paying. People were really grateful for the fact they didn't have to spend money. There were lots of schemes around, so payday schemes, where people paid a shilling a month to local hospitals to get free care. But generally speaking, if you couldn't afford healthcare, you didn't get it. Many of our hospitals, of course, predate the NHS. University Hospital Southampton, or Southampton General, as it's known, was established in 1900 as an infirmary for the city's workhouse. Back then, it even had its own farm supplying food to the kitchens. It took a while for all strands of this massive organisation to come together. The ambulance service was a bit late to the NHS. It didn't actually come in until 1974 with government organisation. Up to then, it had been run by the county council and the uh, county boroughs. So since then, it's been a massive period of change, development, and mainly for the better. The, Windrush. the Windrush generation played a vital role in providing staff. Maureen Harkes arrived from Jamaica in the 1960s, eventually becoming a nurse in Sussex. It made me feel special, it made me feel um, good about myself because I was, uh, I was helping, what you call it, the healing hand. You know, I wasn't taking anything out of the country, I was putting things back. Ask the doctor you'll choose for an application form for each member of your family. 75 years on and the NHS does have many problems, but it treats more than a million people every day. Derek Johnson, ITV News. Well, the man who was in charge of the NHS during the biggest crisis it's ever faced, the COVID pandemic, has told us he wants to see it survive for another 75 years and remain free of charge. Well, Matt Hancock told our political editor Phil Hornby he was completely opposed to any means testing for patients. Matt Hancock, 75th anniversary. What state do you think the health service is in? Well, clearly the NHS is in a difficult position and I care deeply that the NHS is there free for everybody to use over the next 75 years and to do that of course it needs more money and it needs more people and it's getting more people but it's got to be better at how it's run, better use of technology and crucially it needs to be better at helping people stay healthy in the first place. We can't just go on fixing problems. You've always been very keen on talking about tech. Why is it still using fax machines? Well, the NHS should not be using fax machines. It shouldn't have been using them 10 years ago, let alone, let alone now. We know that it can use information better. You know, when you book an appointment, you should be able to choose on the internet like you do when you're booking an appointment for everything else in life. Without that, I, I just can't see how it survives. And I desperately want the NHS to be there free at the point of use for the rest of my life and beyond. Another former health secretary today, Sajid Javid, has said it's not sustainable. We've got to change the way the NHS operates. And he also says, and I know this is true, that privately lots of MPs say it's not sustainable, but they daren't say it's in public. Do, do you agree with him that it's not sustainable? No. I think that the NHS ideal of free at the point of delivery, according to need not ability to pay, is absolutely central to what it is to live in this country. Why shouldn't somebody who can afford it, and that's the important bit, who can afford it, why shouldn't they pay 20 or 30 quid to go and see the GP in just the same way as they might spend 20 or 30 quid getting their hair done? As soon as you introduce charging for the NHS, you move away from that principle that it, we all come together to support each other. And it also makes it, actually, I would think would make it a less efficient organisation. The NHS is incredibly efficient by international standards. It just needs to do so much better on the modern use of technology, which frankly, almost all of us now use in our everyday lives. And critically, 
and this is where the UK is not very good, on keeping um, people being healthy in the first place. You know, the gap in life expectancy in this country between, say, Buckinghamshire and Blackpool is almost 15 years, which shows we know how to help people to live longer, healthier lives because it happens in the richest parts of the country. But it doesn't happen everywhere. And there's so much to do to help people stay healthy in the first place rather than just having an NHS that fixes people when they get ill. Former Health Secretary talking to uh, Phil Hornby there. Interesting to hear Matt Hancock spending so much time talking about technology because many of the high-tech inventions and developments we now take for granted within the NHS, from IVF to MRI scans, uh, would have been unthinkable when it began. And as we mark the 75th anniversary, Christine Alsford has been finding out about some of the next generation of cutting-edge treatments that are transforming patients' lives. From robots being used to perform eye surgery to research into how to repair the damage caused by a heart attack, pioneering equipment, expertise and knowledge like this is giving hope to a whole future generation of patients. Ready, one, two. Little Harry Hughes from New Milton in the New Forest was given life-saving treatment 18 months ago for a rare muscle-wasting disease. And his family can't thank the NHS enough for the £1.8 million drug he received. It really has saved him. He's got past two years old now. Um, without the treatment, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have got to that age, to be honest. He's a million pound baby, but I guess to you he's priceless. Uh, definitely priceless. Definitely priceless. Can I wave? Waving. Good boy. Harry, who's learning his first words and animal sounds, was treated with a cutting-edge gene therapy drug. It's amazing. It boggles your mind when you think about it. Um, to give someone, a human, a replica of a gene that they were completely missing back, I mean, it's incredible, isn't it, really? We're really, really grateful for, for the NHS and for what they've done for us as a family. Right across the NHS, technology and great minds are constantly pushing the boundaries of medicine. Artificial intelligence is now being used to read some mammograms. A whole host of cameras and scanners regularly look inside and treat our bodies. And there are other amazing inventions too, like these 3D printed implants that it's hoped could completely transform orthopaedics. This professor from the University of Portsmouth is seeing his life's work come to fruition. So the 3D printed structure enables bone to grow into the prosthesis and it integrates with the skeleton. It becomes part of you. It sounds a bit like creating bionic men and women, is, is it? Um, well, it's, one, it's the first stage, I would say. The technology means patients may well only need one joint replacement operation throughout their entire life. And trials at the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford have already prevented bone cancer patients having whole limbs removed. That's it, and come back to me. This young patient spent five years having to rely on crutches and a wheelchair before an implant changed her life. Stand on your right leg. Yeah, that's good. I think we are creating the right environment inside the, the body to actually grow bone. And what we've been able to do with this is take patients who have been in pain for years and suddenly their pain has gone and they're walking almost normally. And sort of uh, the patients that we've had experience of, we've actually seen them almost come back to an almost not normal function. The health service today is barely recognisable from how it looked in 1948, but many feel the kind of change and innovation that's on the horizon now will go far beyond what we can even begin to imagine today. Christine Osford, ITV News. And Harry's story there, a reminder that we've all got something to be grateful for, yeah. you know, the test results, you yeah. know, when your children arrive safely, all those things. Absolutely. And a number of buildings are being lit up blue tonight to celebrate those 75 years, including Portsmouth Spinnaker Tower, the O2 Guildhall in Southampton, Salisbury Cathedral. And in Brighton, the Pier, the Royal Pavilion and the Brighton Centre will all turn blue. People are encouraged to take videos and post on social media with the hashtag LightUpBlue or NHS75. Will the weather be good enough for us to go out and see all of that? Well, let's get all your details now. Here with your full forecast is James Wright.
whatever the weather. It always feels like home. Valent Heat Pumps and Boilers sponsor ITV Meridian Weather. Hello there, good evening. Tomorrow's weather, not dissimilar from today, but beyond that, things starting to change. We're going to start importing some very warm air up from the continent. As that happens, you notice the jet stream starting to do a loop the loop, and what that's doing is holding low pressures out towards the west of us. Quite a few of them, and they've all got some uh, rain bands wrapped around them. The one on Saturday could be a little bit of a troublemaker. As far as tonight goes, though, once the sun goes down, power of the showers is lost so things drying out and on the whole it'll be clear skies overnight as the breeze drops out it'll actually give us quite a cool fresh night too uh, lows in the high single figures in one or two rural spots tomorrow then a bit of a change in terms of the wind direction that's important in terms of temperatures it's starting that process of importing the warmer air uh, much like today some nice sunshine around and then one or two showers kicking off generally further west and like i say that southerly getting us up to 20 or 20 21 Celsius, so still slightly down where we'd expect at this point in the year, but in a bit of sunshine, out of the breeze and out of any showers, not faring too badly, just a bit cool on the beach. Friday really sees that temperature rising quite rapidly, 26 to 29 Celsius, one or two spots in, say, Berkshire, Thames Valley might get up to 30, not particularly breezy, a lot of sunshine out there, so take care. We pay for that on Saturday as one of these fronts moves through, and depending upon the timing, might be a dry start, but this could could turn out to be a bit of a troublemaker. Some heavy and torrential slow moving downpours could see issues with flooding and there could be a dose of lightning mixed in. So we've got to watch out for that. Things cooling down once that clears on Sunday. Back to sunny spells and those showers too. Valent Heat Pumps and Boilers sponsor ITV Meridian Weather. Hello summer. Piri sponsors ITV Pollen Count. We are marching towards the end of the pollen season for this year, but with some sunshine and some warm weather through Thursday and Friday, expect high counts, a moderate count early on Saturday ahead of that rain. Have a good evening. And that is about it from us for this evening. Hope you've enjoyed our celebration of NHS 75. In a moment, the ITV Evening News with Lucrezia Millerini. I'll have your late update. That's just after half past ten, as you know. For now, though, from all of us here on the team, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your evening. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.